Generally, the person who's talking, uh, all eyes are on him, which is polite. But uh, the purpose of this uh, staff briefing, we're going to be doing a lot of toolbox talks on staff briefings going forward. Okay? Uh, so we're going to start it off, kick it off today with customer service training. The previous shift from Oral Shift and Mike Shift have had this. Uh, you are yet outstanding. I know Henry and uh, Mr. Moore here have also had it, but there are some things in here which, uh, after the presentation, which I need to cover. And then Sam's gonna, I'm gonna hand it over to Sam and he's got some important stuff for you as well. One of the things I'm gonna be covering today, you'll be very happy with, Mr. Miller? Yeah. Okay, let me just find my important presentation amongst the busy desktop. All right. You've been uh, working too hard. Oh, sorry, wrong one. That's one. Okay, I love this picture. With uh, Mr. Enzo. I've got no. This one. Okay, so customer service and protecting the brand. Got very little like Helen. Say again, sorry? The gorilla looks like Helen. Helen? Mm, oh, yes. I never saw it. Was that the former cleaning manager? Mm. Okay, then, okay. Well, that picture you just glanced at, it does look like Helen, doesn't it? Look at that picture, there, yeah. what a cracking picture. Yeah. Oh, I don't love that picture. <coughs> uh, so, yeah, great stuff, I need to get involved with that. Okay, so, uh, the objectives of this quick uh, session, it's only five, seven minutes, is understand what good service looks like, how can this be delivered, to provide a good level of customer service to all visitors, retailers, and staff and to, of course, protect the brand uh, and ultimately treat others the way you want to be treated. So, out to everybody. Who should get good customer service? Uh, Sam, not you. Everybody. Everyone. Oh, he's got it. You've got it. One, good, excellent. Okay, so, um, visitors, colleagues, yeah. suppliers, retailers, contractors, and? Clients, everyone. So, yeah, great answer. Uh, okay, so the customer journey. So a few few important things. Uh, you know, what do customers see when they come in? They see entrances, so they must be clear and clean. Uh, the miles need to be, uh, you know, clean floors, no rubbish. Especially examples uh, like yesterday, it was very busy in the mall. Mercy was doing the best she could, uh, but there was bits of rubbish here and there which customers are just throwing down. So keep an eye on that. If you're secure, everybody has a responsibility for health and safety. Cleaning comes into that. Security comes into that. Uh, you know, if I can walk through the mall and I see a bit of rubbish on the floor and I can pick it up and put it in the bin, I see no reason why anybody else in this room can't do the same. We're all one team, yeah? Uh, don't get me wrong, at the same time, I'm just, you know, if it's somebody's snotty tissue on the floor or, you know, something that's disgusting that requires gloves or equipment, contact the cleaning team, yeah? Um, facilities, uh, and obviously that's an office environment which is always clean. Uh, the power of hello, um, you know, housekeepers, and uh, also security applies to everybody on this site. You know, a lot of the times when we uh, approach a customer, sometimes, you know, it's a, either they'll give you a strange look and you'll give it back, or we'll give a strange look and they'll give it back. You know, I'm not saying we, any of us do that, but it's, it's just nature. Everywhere you go nowadays, we just walk past people, you know, customers. We, we don't, I'm not saying go up to every single customer and say hello, but certainly if you're walking through the malls, anywhere, and you know, you're coming out the toilets and somebody walking past you and, you know, gives you a smile, it's just nice to say hello. Uh, so let's try and make that uh, a bit more common practice. Um, meet a member of staff, make eye contact and say hello. Security feels safe. Again, on the security side, very important that we keep to our own areas, which Sam and Mike are sick to death of me, uh, you know, breathing down the neck, saying that we need to make sure all security guards are where they should be, not stood together having conversations, which has got a lot better. We just need to keep on it. 
and then you've got a little picture of car seat at the bottom there with the, one of the event staff and then housekeeping clean litter out of the cupboard customer service facts saw the 90 90 rule people from 90 percent of the, people form at 90 percent of their last impression in the first 90 seconds believe it or not and in seven seconds of a contact a customer can form 10 impressions about you and your organization now i'm sure mercy won't mind me sharing this but mercy is due to leave us in a couple of weeks Sadly, uh, very sadly, she's gone back to her previous site. But Mercy, this kind of training will also benefit you in your in, in your role when you're when you're going. So first impressions, ten impressions customers form about you or your organisation in the first seven seconds of contact. So always make sure you're friendly, helpful, professional, uh, courteous, clean, well groomed, uh, you know, confident, knowledgeable, credible, and responsive. And there's one more efficient in what you do one very important thing which i mentioned to the last um, two teams is look if somebody comes up to you and you know they ask you a question and you're not sure don't say i don't know i don't know it's not my job you know always say, oh, it, say no. let me exactly let me see if i can check with a colleague you know if, if you've got a phone with you put your phone out check on google do what you can to help the customer it's always nice and polite yeah because you could have somebody visiting and on the work something goes through control yeah looking for a bank or a certain area or whatever good well i've got to say david you know a lot of us are good at it in, in here some some better than others and, and and you are really good at it so keep it up mate first impressions uh so always make sure you do smile uh where applicable you know if somebody's coming up to your security and trying to throw a punch at you don't smile uh maintain eye contact uh, i'm really realistic when i deliver my training sessions you know i won't sort of go off the slide word to word i may but i'll also give be realistic about you know what, what, what we should expect you know sometimes what we are told it, it doesn't always go to plan mm -hmm. yeah so we've got to be realistic face the person when you're talking to them it's polite and it's a bit of respect stand up straight uh, approachable stance and open hand gestures and a few don'ts as well don't roll your eyes stare <coughs> or down. Uh, don't shake or scratch your head don't scowl or look stressed it does happen there you know it happens it? don't slouch uh, Jeremy, oh sorry, he's not here, sorry. Uh, don't fold your arms, don't stand at an angle, and don't point. I, that's, that's one of my bugbears. I hate it when somebody talks to me. You're all going to do it now. It does that. I hate it. So don't, don't do that to a customer. And, stand and, at an and, angle. And, 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 oh, so, so, so stand up, I'll show you. Fall over, is that Stand here, mate. Come on, stand here. Stand at 90 degrees. When I'm talking to you face to face there, yeah. eye contact, proper eyeballing you around the conversation, you can't seem very aggressive. So if you stood on a bit of an angle, it's a bit more polite when you're talking to them. Oh, Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I'll give you examples all day long, don't you? Really? And don't say I don't know. Please don't say you don't know. Because one of the things I'm not supposed to tell any of you this, but I will tell you, because you're my team and I don't want you to look silly. I've been told by CVRE, please do not tell them why I told you this. Um, mystery shoppers are around mm -hmm. and they will come up to you and they will ask you random questions. How do I get to Red Rock Cinema? Yeah. Where, where's the nearest boots? Where's the nearest cash machine? Where's the nearest public? They are trick questions, and then when you'll know, you'll tip, you'll you'll get a good idea when when he's, this is a bit of a bit of a hint, a tip if you will. If it's a customer, you know, if somebody goes up to you and says, "Hi, can you tell me where the toilets are?" Yeah, if you just go straight down here, turn left. There's the toilets. Okay, thank you. They'll go. Not a mystery shopper. If they stand there and ask you for a few more questions, possibly mystery shopper. So I'll tell you a, a, a good rule to um, to overcome this. Yeah. Think of every customer as a mystery shopper. Yeah. CBRE might hire me one day and say, go on there, you're a mystery shopper for an hour. Could be any of you lot. Yeah, so just be mindful, mystery shoppers are around. Okay, protecting the brand. Sorry, a lot of information on there. What do we mean by the brand? What is our brand? So when we are walking about, uh, we are representing OCS, Mersey Way and Red Rock, also CBRE and the council. We must ensure we are always behaving in a professional manner. How do we protect our brand? Give consistent, excellent uh, customer service. Don't differentiate from one customer to another. I like him, I don't like it, you know, sort of thing. Everybody, standard service, everybody. Doesn't matter who you come into contact with. Kill people with kindness. That's pretty much how I can summarize it. And I put the next one in red. Very important, do not have personal conversations with colleagues in front of customers. That happens a lot. And it happens with certain individuals. I'm not gonna mention their names. Thankfully, they are not in this room. Uh, but uh, it, it does happen. Yeah, we're, we're not paid to stand there all day talk to customers. That doesn't mean that we don't say hello. You know, we, we don't sort of engage for a couple of minutes. But we're not there to sort of lean on a trolley uh, or, or, or you know a roll just randomly having conversations with people. 
uh, when we're there to work. Uh, be aware of your posture, uh, poise and facial expression. Be friendly, genuine, confident and enthusiastic. Remember, visitors that feel welcome will return. I'll give you a very good example, and I'm sure Henry won't mind me saying this. So, I notice things when I'm out and about. You know, a lot of the times you won't see me, but I will see you. Uh, and I don't mean via camera, because I will be out and about, but I, as well as talking fast, I walk fast. So, you know, sometimes you may not see me, but I'll fly past you. And I do observe what people are doing, uh, trust me. And, and if I see potential in people uh, with the ability to further develop themselves, then I will push them to do that. So one of the things I'm pushing for at the minute, and it, Sami, it'll help you and Mike out uh, immensely, is I'm uh, gonna be, I'm looking at putting Henry on an SI course. Okay. So that he will still carry on doing his own role. He will still do his own one for off with Mike or uh, with Mark, otherwise Mark will kill me. Uh, but when he's off and you have all time available, you can use him. And mm -hmm. I think he'll be very good. And that's because I've spotted something uh, when, when he's out on the mall and I won't go into what, but you know, I, I will look for things like that. There are sites where there are dual role officers. There are, there's a site in Preston, St. George's Shopping Centre. The security guards are also cleaners. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that's something that I would never ask a security guard to do, but if a cleaning member of staff wants to develop themselves, then make no mistakes, I'll help them do that. Um, and remember, visitors that feel welcome will come back. You know, if they, if they come here and they get poor service, you know, they, they'll end up in a pub the same day and say, uh, Shit, all that noisy bitch, excuse my language. Not going back, I'm not going back there again. That security guard, he was aggressive with me. And it, it, you know, leave a good, lasting opinion with people. And remember, OCS values, you will get questioned on this by Andy. Uh, unity, so working together and not against each other. We're all one team, you all get paid the same um, you know, on, on your own teams, uh, so work together. There's no, you know, I'm better than him or, or, or he, she's better than me. There's none of that. Work together. Because, you know, working together equals empowerment. And sharing skills equals best practice. If, you, if, you, if you're all doing the same thing, and I don't care if there's 10 mystery shoppers in a week, they're all going to get the same level of service. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and trust, you know, trust your colleagues, be honest, consistent, and excel in what you do. Uh, you know, respect each other in every interaction. You may not agree with everything your colleague might say, but just be nice, you know, don't be horrible about it. And it costs nothing to be nice. So to summarize, engage with the public and use the power of hello. Uh, one thing I don't want to say, see, and, and, I, and I said this in, in, on the last session with Mike and Romano, I see this a lot. I see this a lot. Uh, you know, security guards, they'll have their, their G lays on, their, you know, they'll have their hands in the back of the G lays. It's not like court to be having hands in the back of the air. They just walk around like police officers. We're not police officers, we're security officers. Simple as that. Thankfully, Sam and Mr. Moore don't do it, but some people do do it. But I've said we, we need to knock that on the head. Um, you know, as well as the power of hello, one thing I've always found which has been really, really helpful is, sir, Madam, thank you. Is there anything else I can help you with? If a customer comes up to you with a query, how nice, how nice would you be? Put yourself in the customer's shoes. You're going into, uh, I don't know, Arndale, yeah? And you go up to your lost, you find in the shop, and you go up to your security guard or a cleaner. Uh, you know, the cleaners are quite knowledgeable there. And you ask a cleaner, how do I get to Supergood? And they tell you. And, and that's all they want help with. But then you finish the conversation off with, is there anything else I can help you with? It sticks with that person for a bit, yeah? so. I don't want to hear things on the mall, and I'll make it very clear whether anybody likes it or not. Pal, mate, bro, no. They're not your brother, they're not your pal, they're not your mate, they are customers, yeah? Can I help you, sir? Can I help you, madam? Thank you very much. Anything else I can help you with? I use that all the time. If you ever, any of you catch me saying to somebody on the mall, I mate, you okay? Very rare, very rare, unless it's somebody I know. But if it's a customer you don't know, don't use those phrases, please. There you go, that leads me to my next one. Fella, that's a horrible one. Security guards love that. All right, fella. No, yeah, just don't use that. Please don't use that. And thank you, is there anything else I can help you with? If a member of public asks you something, don't say I don't know. Respond by saying let me find out for you. I mentioned this right at the start of the presentation. I'm mentioning it again. It stresses the importance. And please be proactive and positive in what you do. And remember about first impressions and last impressions. When this presentation got emailed to me, I had to change quite a bit. It said, remember about first impressions. There was nothing about last impressions. I put that on there, because last impressions for me are important. Yeah, I remember that. And treat others the way you want to be treated. Okay? That's the end of the customer service presentation. Now moving on to a few other important bits. Okay. In relation to FPL, uh, this applies to everybody, yeah? Not just uh, cleaners. So uh, the security and cleaning team should be highlighting any overflowing bins 
Now, all of you are going to get sick to death of me mentioning this because I'm going to mention it. The briefings used to be some Monday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. It's now going to change to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. And some of what you hear will be exactly the same. Deliberately. And if I have to leave it on there for 12 months, I will leave it on there for 12 months because I want it to become the norm. It is not fair on him reporting all the flint bins and you not. For example, yeah. uh, I know you're very good at it, but for example, so it's, it, it, you know, we all need to be working as a team to tackle this. The most important role, you all have a, a very important role, but the person sat in the control room has got a demanding role. Please do not think he's sat in there on his phone watching Netflix all day. He's got a tough job in there. I'm telling you now, he's got a tough job in there. But I've had people work in that control room who've broken down. I want their names. You know, before my time as well, because it's so demanding in there. You know, if, if you if you're under the impression that you go there, you ring a bell, I can have some keys, and the controller will bounce up to you straight away. It's not going to happen. There are cameras, there are phones, there are jobs from me, there are jobs from Mo, there are jobs from Victoria, jobs from Andy. There's a lot they have to do. Only last week, uh, Sam, myself, Mike, and Andy had a meeting about KPIs. So let me explain briefly what KPIs are. You probably all heard. You may or may not have heard the terminology. KPI stands for Key Performance Indicators. So me, I'm OCS. Yeah. I'd say if I was a director of OCS, a bidding manager, and I wanted this contract at Merseyway in Red Rock, I would go in and tender for that contract. And I would agree that I will give you all of them services for that amount of money. Are you with me? Yeah. That's called a contractual obligation, yeah? Contractual. And that's a contract between OCS and Merseyway or CBRE, whoever. But I'm trying to give you a bit of a picture, it's good experience for you. And then the, the client will want to make sure that somehow they are measuring us in delivering this. So every month we have a KPI meeting and they will pull clauses out of the contract out and it will go into a document. And we will, we will get scored from one to five. Different sites have different scoring methods. We have one to five. One is very poor, five is excellent, three is borderline. Okay, so we get measured on that every month. The next meeting is on Friday. So on a day-to-day -day basis, if me, Sam, or Mike, or Mark, or Romano ask you to do something, it's not because we just feel like making your life hell, it's because there's people above us who are asking these questions, and we have to make sure we get a tick in the box for most of them, if not all of them, because we will get questioned on KPIs. Does that make sense? So KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. Now last week, uh, Sam and Mike have been given their own set of KPIs. You will be getting one too as well, man. Uh, but it won't be as in-depth, but you will get it. So it's a set of jobs that they have to make sure they're ticked off every day, every week. And then once a month, me and Andy will sit down with them both, and then the cleaners, supervisors, and say, have you done it? And if they don't, then it doesn't look good. So they can only do that with the support of the whole team. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah? If any of this sounds boring, please let me know, but it's good for you to know. I, you know, there are some things that I, you don't need to know, you know, uh, but there are some things that I'd like you to know. Because you need to understand sometimes that it's not just me saying, Mercy, can you go and do this? Because I feel like it. It's because we have to. Abby, I need you to go and do this now. Mark, can you go and do this? There's a reason behind it. Okay? So so going back to the, the bins, very important. Yeah, so the security and cleaning team should be highlighting any overflowing bins. Every time you're on patrol, if you see a bin that's overflowing, first and foremost, shout it out to the control room. The control room then absolutely must, it is mandatory, that they log it on the DOB immediately. I'll tell you why. Because every Monday morning, that DOB will be sent to me. I have to then send that to the client. And they will look at the, the trend for the previous week. Why? Right, Monday there was four bins overflowing. Super drug, all the time super drug. They will narrow it down, they will narrow it down, they will narrow it down, and then they'll go and see super drug. This is the client. And they'll say, what are you playing? These are the stats we've got from our guys. So it's not just you're reporting it, just so they can log it. That information every Monday, Sam doesn't know this, but I want you to just got the email yesterday, I'm reading on it now. That information every Monday, Sam or Mike will send it to me, I will check it and send it to the client. And th that entry will be highlighted in purple. So again, Sam's not available this year, but you, you know, I'll just sort of throw it in. It'll be highlighted in purple. So security stuff when you're on patrols, cleaning stuff when you're out cleaning. If you see any bins overflowing, log them with the control room. I think that's 1100 times anything else. Yes. Now, first thing Sam or Mike will do, or whoever else is in the control room, whether it's Mr. Moore, Rachel, whoever, the first thing they, they should do, okay, thanks for letting me know, DOV, and then they will get somebody to cover them in the control room, and that supervisor will go, and, if it's a control room there, they will contact a supervisor, a security supervisor. They will go and then speak to that tenant. 
that's it. That will also get logged on the uh, DOB. So the client, when they're looking at the DOB, when they open the file, they think, all oh, right, okay, great stuff. Mr. Mellor, you spotted an offline bin, say with three. What did you do? You shouted up the control room two minutes later. What did Sam do? He logged it. What did he do then? He went to see the tenant. Excellent. Two days later, they still have the same problem. That's when it gets escalated to the client. We need to be consistent with this. We need to be, you know, it's like a, it's like a jigsaw, three puzzles. If one of those puzzles is not completed, the puzzle's not gonna be complete. We can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want us to, you know, if you want this to improve and you want the bins to not be as overflowed and the legs close properly, we can only do that if everybody plays their part, yeah? I'm gonna tell you something really that might not, you might not like now. Everything I've just said, I'm gonna repeat it for the next, every briefing for the next 12 months. And if I'm not here, Sam or Mike will. Just to make sure it becomes the norm, yeah? Absolutely. So, resolve accordingly. When tenants are disposing of boxes without breaking down, the supervisors should initially visit the tenants to highlight and resolve. The team should also ensure waste is being appropriately segregated by tenants. A number of boxes can be seen in the EFL, which I'll show you a couple of pictures in a minute, which shouldn't be the case unless they are contaminated with liquids, etc. Please can you ensure the team are taking more ownership of this matter? It needs to become second nature for everybody. He's excellent at it. I need everybody to be excellent at it. In relation to the Sterling Foods bins, two orange and two blue, the team should be managing this space better. Pallets, if you see pallets, should be removed and taken down to the basement to use for cardboard bales. Where the tenant has attached plastic bags to the outside. Can I just stop you there? Go on. Uh, some, some of the pallets are not suitable for uh, half the time. Wait. Okay, so, so, so we need to find somewhere where they can be stored. Okay, so that, 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 can pick them up. that's an easy fix. That's an easy fix. Every site in the United Kingdom will have a company that picks up pallets, picks up cardboard, you know, and they, and they pay a small few pence for it, whatever it is, but and, and they recycle it. That, that can be done. Common sense applies here. If there are pallets out and about, you get them downstairs in the loading bay and use them for cardboard bales. If you deem that pallet to be unsafe, then clearly common sense applies and you don't use it for cardboard bales. You stack it up somewhere else, a location to be defined and confirmed. But you can liaise well, with Mark I'm and Sam on that. With you yeah, that. yeah, just, just liaise with um, Mark and uh, Sam on that, because I've got an immensely busy day today. Uh, but speak to these guys, they'll, they'll sort. Sam's got more experience than me on site, but he, he's the best person for it. So, where a tenant has attached plastic bags to the outside of their bins, supervisors should visit the tenant and ask to remove and dispose appropriately. Bins must be kept closed at all times. And if they are found to be overflowing, it should be documented on the daily log. That daily log, everything needs to be on there. And I mean everything, I've stressed that from the first day I've been here. Um, and these stats should be shared weekly in the management report uh, so that uh, we can get an understanding of the frequency. So uh, my, forgive me, my apologies, I said Monday, that's incorrect. Sam will send me the data every Saturday and I will, or Mike, and I will include it in my management report on the Sunday. Any questions so far? What to visit a tenant going to do if their bins are overflowing? You want them to get it emptied, basically. Say again. Well, we emptied the set of bins. No, 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 no. We, we, we do. No, what what, what is... I think he means in that respect is when you get some stores, right, and they put five boxes, right? No, 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 no the guard log. I'm not talking about the guard log. I'm talking yeah, about the waste bins. Right. Okay, so it, it, it's all about improving the way we do things mm -hmm. and, you know, catching the perpetrators. The people who are causing these problems the whole purpose of this exercise is to narrow down who the repeat offenders are. So we can escalate it to CBRE and they will deal with it. But if anything is not closed properly, open the lid, find out why it's not closed properly. If the wrong waste is being put in bins, what let the controlling know and log it. What about bins that have been, have been left and the tenants have like left? Like Bright House, for instance, with a blue bin behind that. Yeah. Well, he's been there for God knows how long. Okay, let, let that sound know. Log it. If you're unsure of anything, let the control room know. <coughs> the control room will check with me. If required, I will check with CBRE and we'll get to the bottom of it. No one's actually picking it up. No. It's been there. Might be too heavy. I must have looked. But yeah, so uh, you got it now. Yeah, but um, you picked it up now and you flagged it. Well done. If you're walking around and you think, should I flag this up? If in doubt, flag it up. No. Simple. I'd rather see more entries on the DOB than little entries. That makes well, sense? I mentioned the said bin to Mark anyway about it. And I said, this bin's never going to get empty. Well, from now on, what, what I want you to do is, uh, you know, let's get it emptied. From now, from now on, what I want you to do is, don't mention it to Mark, mention it to the control room. And give Mark a heads up when you see him. He's still a decent knowledge as a supervisor. Yeah. 
but let the control room know, because then you just log it. I want to see lots of entries on there, and then gradually I want to see those drop, 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 and then a consistency. I'm talking even if it's reporting like the same bin three days in a row. Absolutely, especially if it's three bins, uh, if it's the same bin three days in a row, because that tells me that's a mega offender, and they're not doing anything about it. Absolutely, man. Uh, so yeah, very good point. I'm glad you, you mentioned that. Okay, so a uh, bit of a heads up, Tesco will soon be taking possession of the one-stop hub unit. Therefore, this area will experience an increased level of activity. Please ensure it is being managed accordingly, basically. So, so with me, I know you're on with it, and you've got a few jobs on today. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there is one. I, I, listen, <laughs> I, I expect no less, because I know you would. But um, at some point today, you've probably done this already, because I'll just take my phone, send those pictures. Uh, before and after I read it, uh, or as many as you've got sending them through. Okay, so Michael Marlborough. I'm in the process of doing that. Sorry? I'm in the process of doing that. Good, uh, good. Michael Mark were arranging this job between 10 hours or really out anyway for the loading main service corridor to be cleaned in Segway 3 and um, sent before and after picks. Uh, so obviously I've been asked to chase that up and you guys are on it. So great stuff. So customer said, everybody happy with bins? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Bins, cardboard, everything. Uh, last lap, email to be there at the briefing. Uh, missed bin collections, another one. Bins that are not collected on a Tuesday and what are they? Saturday? Thursday. Thursday, sorry. It's not going to be intelligent bins, it's not going to be else. No, FEOs. Yeah, Tuesday, Thursday. Okay, Tuesday. Right, any bins that are not collected, let the control room know within 30 minutes. Immediately, when I'm giving you a 30 minute window. Any bins that are not collected, let the control room know, please, straight away. Control room, document it and let the client know straight away. If the client knows two hours later, they are going to be pissed off. Excuse my language, yeah? Uh, so, you know, I've said this before, but we're still failing on it. I get an email from clients saying, Zed, there was no sanitary bin collection last week on Tuesday. We got told about it on Wednesday. Not acceptable. Absolutely not acceptable. Because I'll tell you what will happen. If I'm saying it now again, that this must be happened and it must be reported the same day, within 30 minutes, yeah, and it's not, and, and it's, it doesn't happen, an investigation will happen as to who was on shift that day, and I will have to call people in for a disciplinary. And believe it or not, as daft as it might sound, if I had to do that a few times, People Sorry. will get sacked over it. And that's how serious it is. Yeah. If, if little things are not done. I'm being told by my client, our client, and my line manager that I'm too nice. No, so, I'm going to be going to have another conversation with it. How many times have we told them? A few times. You should be having discipline. No, 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 no. They're my staff. I trust them. They'll get it done. My staff don't interfere. They're my team. Yeah, so my approach is different. I'd rather sit down with you and say, look, these are the implications if it's not done. So you must, any sanitary bins not collected, any FEOs not collected, for God's sake, within the first 30 minutes of not being collected, let the control room know. And control room, let the client know. I do not want to hear from the client again, because it's embarrassing when I come back in and I get an email saying, this has happened. Because if it happens again, then I will have to have different conversations with people. Okay? Okay. There's been a lot of confusion with the sanitary bins though. Is that still happening on a Tuesday morning? Yeah, absolutely. It, but it was, then it wasn't, then it wasn't, it wasn't. Well, you can hear it from me wasn't, now. Wasn't. You can hear it from me now. It still is happening on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. it's definitely oh, every Tuesday morning. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and if anybody tells you any different, don't believe them. Unless I tell you any different. Simple as that. If you, when, you, when it's Chinese whispers, when you start hearing different people, it, actually, it, oh shit, has it changed? Has anyone forgot to tell us? If I, can't, if I don't get around to telling you, I'll put it on the WhatsApp group. And I'm delighted to say I'm now going to be quiet, breathe, and hand over to Sam. Brilliant. <clears throat> Right, well, it's all about the evac rolls. Uh, okay, so you, you should know yours, Mark. The evac roll? No, you've done I, evac before, haven't you? I've done roll three, yeah. Yeah, I, you've done evac before. I know, yeah. Abby? Yeah. Do you know your evac roll? My roll? Your evac. Fire your evacuation roll. So? What is your roll? What do you do in the evac? Well, the first thing, you go to the centre of the mall mm -hmm. to create awareness mm -hmm. for all the customers around. Mm -hmm. So then you go to the fire mall, get your fire jackets, mm -hmm. and make sure you move them to the nursing way, well, the meeting center. The doors. Then, yeah, mm -hmm. the doors. Then you go up the staircase, make sure the place is locked so that nobody is having an mm -hmm. entrance to the place. And then? Then you ring the control. <laughs> That's the important thing. That was it, yeah, tell control when it's done. <coughs> we don't know that we're going to be waiting for you when it can prolong things. Mercy, your role. My role? Yeah. 
Do you know your role? What is your role? <coughs> My role is that maybe we see something like fire come through. We need to go to the center of the room and stay there. Not the mall. Abby's, Abby's in the mall. Abby's all four. So if it's if it's Mercy's normal shift today, mm -hmm. is it Mercy's normal shift? Yeah. 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 So so, Mercy, so, yeah. so, so yeah, let, yeah, let, me, yeah. let, let me clarify something. If it is your normal shift, you will generally do your normal area. So you will be the covered mile Mercy. If Abby, you are in covering somebody else, Jeremy, um, your role then you will be control. doing Jeremy's role. Yeah? So you will be the external mile. You will be the coach. So you will be doing this exactly what Abby yeah. just said. But what I'm interested to know, sorry, Jeff, yes, I'm no, sure. fine, no, no. what I'm interested to know is uh, you're away, you're sweeping away, you're emptying the bins, all of a sudden, the alarm goes off. From that point, what do you do? That's what I'm, I'm interested to know. If you tell me some hang back to you, mate. Well, man, yeah, the next question. What I would do is that when the fire went off, I, mean, mm -hmm. I have to go to the center of the mall. Mm -hmm. Then I have to bring the the okay. the control. That's what control I control first. Before you do anything. Control first. Radio. I radio the control mm -hmm. first. So before any other thing, that's what I do. That's all you know. Yes. You radio control. Yeah, it's an alarm. Yeah, hear an alarm. Sorry, it's an alarm. Right. Do you not know the rest of your normal role? When you're in on your normal shift, mm -hmm. do you not know your role? Other well, than radio control. No, but my role is that any time the fire, uh, so the, the fire went off, mm -hmm. I need to go to the the uh, the jacket and take the jacket mm -hmm. and wear the jacket. Mm -hmm. And so after wearing the jacket, we need to go to the center. What I mean, go to the center of the mall. Mm -hmm. I have to read the radio, the control, uh, the control. That's what I read on it. You don't know about going up the stairs, checking that it's all clear, locking the blue door. Yes, I need mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. To check the upstairs, to check everywhere whether everything is okay. Mm -hmm. Check it's clear, no one's there. And they have to lock that door to make sure no one can come in. There's a blue door at the top. Okay. top of the, the blue door at the top of the mile stairs. You have to lock that door. Okay. And come back down to the ground floor, the radio control when it's all done. So will they have the uh, keys? Do they have yeah, the keys? The, the the set has a basket key. To lock that, excellent. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's very important, and apologies, Sam, keep jumping. No, that's no, fine, you jump in. It, it, it is very important if a fire, if we're sat here now and a fire alarm goes off, we act quickly. Yeah? Because if it's a genuine fire, if we don't act quickly, people's lives could be in danger. Yeah? Chances are, it could be a false alarm, but it could be a genuine one. Fire systems are in place not just for false alarms, but to protect life. Yeah, so we need to act fast and we must not, you will get sick of me saying this, but I won't get sick of saying it. We must not panic. Shit, alarm's gone off, what do I do? No, do not do. Relax. Just relax. It's just an alarm. Yeah? Alarm's gone off, fire alarm's gone off. Okay, it's not a test. What's my job? Focus on your job. Go and do your job. Go and get your high vis. Go up to the stairs. Check the doors are locked. Make sure the area is cleared. Then, once that is done, once your role is fulfilled, you pick up your radio. Mercy to control, all clear, and I'm in position. The control room can then take you off and move on to the next person. You must do that. One thing you must not do is a fire alarm's gone off. What do I do? Panic! Fire, what, what do I do? Am I hiding? Is that you? Or ignore it. Yes. You, you, this is very, very important. I've said this for 22 years on a lot of sites. When the fire alarm goes off, the first thing you must not do, panic. Second thing you must not do is all of you start talking on the radio. You're talking over each other. Him, Sam, or Mike will contact each of you. Yeah. yeah? More, you're, are you in position? All clear? Yep, yeah, all clear. Boom, yeah. done. He's off the radio. Abby, in your area, all clear? Yep. Yeah. So you are telling him, I have checked my area, I have locked whatever I need to, I have done all of my duties, I've got my high base, and I am now in position, making sure nobody comes back into the building. Yeah. Very, very important. Now, I've only been on this site four months, and, and I can tell you that is a procedure on more sites, yeah? When the fire alarm goes off, get your high base, complete your, your, your role, and get in position, and make sure nobody else enters the building unless, until, control. the control room tells you. Even if the fire brigade come on site, 
The fire brigade will generally liaise with either myself or Sam or Mike or Mo Shirazi, an appointed person. Once the fire brigade for that appointed person, you can start letting people in. Then the process, jump in if you want Sam. Then the process is, first people who are allowed back in is tenants. Yep. When the tenants yeah, confirm, so. customers can come back in, they <coughs> let the customers back in. Yeah? Because if you let the customers in first, shoplifters, they're going to have a you know, hard job. Obviously, so yeah. Well, if you got the same as the alarms and everything, they'll go a bit quiet first. Yeah. Then we'll start coming in. Yeah. Sam, do you just want to touch on the um, uh, announcement bit as well? Or the oh, sorry? The announcement, the PA. Oh, the PA system. Well, for what? Tell them what it'll say or? Yeah. I don't know what it's done. Let me changed it. Oh, I don't want to be a good guy. You changed it for what it used to say. Yeah, okay. <coughs> oh. Yeah, now that I'm coming for joining. So, mm. what are my rules? Give me roll five. Five. Okay. Same with Mark. No, you're about the old six. Five or six. Five or six. Yeah, five. 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 Okay, guys. So, fire alarm's gone off. Fire alarm's gone off. The first thing you will hear from the control room on the PA system. Attention, attention, we have an incident in the center. Please leave immediately by your nearest exit. They will repeat that how many times, sir? Three. Yeah, got it? Attention, attention, we have an incident in the center. Please leave immediately via your nearest exit. So he's doing half your job for you. He's already asking people to leave. Yeah. You just need to make sure you clear your areas, lock the uh, relevant doors, uh, put your high vis on, stand in your position, make sure nobody comes back in the yeah. building. Yeah, people will ignore it. Yeah, of That's course. why you're all there. Henry here. Yeah. Is there going to be some type of test or are we just supposed to read it and wait? No, you, you, you won't read this. You mean no, this? I mean, we have our own now. Roll call? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I, I'll give you a heads up. I've been told within the next two weeks, within the next two weeks, I don't know what day, but within the next two weeks, there is going to be a six month evacuation drill. Now, every side, as part of their health and safety compliance, I will run over a bit. As part of the health and safety compliance, every site is a legal requirement for businesses and sites to conduct at least one emergency evacuation fire drill every six months. Yeah, we are due ours now. I think we're overdue. So in the next, within the next two days, it could happen tomorrow, and I'm not on site tomorrow. Yeah, the summit. Uh, it could at any point tomorrow, Tuesday, Wednesday. Mo will just walk in control, and he'll turn that key to evac. Yeah. So he doesn't say anything. He walks in, goes. Pick. It was, yeah, 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 oh, I'm just doing me back, let me see what you can do. No, he'll just come in the control room, morning, how's it going? How's it going, Mark? You okay? I'll just turn the key. Oh, shit. Okay. And then he's just going to kick back and see what you do. And he's going to think, he's going to, and at the end of that, he's going to say, was that managed in the most worst manner ever, or did the guys and girls do a good job? It's not difficult. Alarm goes off. Wait for the PA. Do your thing. Stand in your position. Don't let anybody in. That's it. Regardless where you are. Henry, I'm keen to know what you would do because you're looking after public toilets. No. I'll go to all the shops outside the mall and then inform them of what's going on. Then I'll move to the basement and radio control. I can't really do anything. Okay, Sam, can you help me? Roll out? six, I'll take out always. Jack, get in the uh, clipboards and mm -hmm. solution rooms with all the tenants on it. So you have to go around, okay. take them off. And then go into the basement, do the roll call at the assembly point, and then radio control when you've confirmed that everyone is out and all the tenants have said everyone's here. There needs to be here. Yeah. Do you know where that assembly point is? Assembly point? Yeah. You, like, so if there's an evacuation, there's a, a safe zone, we call it an assembly point, where people would meet up and obviously each fire leader would account for their staff. Do you know where that fire assembly point is? And does anybody know where the fire assembly point is? It's a yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so Sam, can you do me a favor today? Um, with um, Henry, Mercy, and Abby. Oh, Is that what I keep going off? Yeah. Yeah. I see them in the ball. Oh, I see them in the ball. 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 I see them in the 
Yeah, so Sam, can you do me a favor at some point today, whatever oh, yeah. time it fits in with you, can you uh, meet up with Henry? Say, so, right, Henry, fine, I'll go out I can't do it today because I'm stuck in control. Uh, get Mr. Moore to come to your control. Because right. he, he's had his CCTV training, mm. he still can't touch anything because he's not applied for yeah, the license yet, but he's doing that today. Well, 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 put him in the control room. Well, Tampa, got it, so. Yeah, so yeah, you, you can put him in the control room, and it's, it's only going to take 15 mm. minutes, maybe, with each mm -hmm. person. Well, I'd rather you do this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it'll help Mike out and it'll help you out depending on whose day it goes off on. Go down to Henry, say, right Henry, alarm's gone off now. Mm -hmm. PA alarm switch has gone off, this is what I need you to do. Mm -hmm. And then go to do the same, same with Mercy and same with Abby. Mm -hmm. Just go over their roles. Uh, Mr. Mellon, do you know your role? Uh, not that role, to be quite honest, with you being new. Absolutely it's fine. All I know is what to make, make sure there's nobody in the area working in, because obviously they work in different areas. Of course. Right, so if it's a service, service area and the delivery comes in a summer, I'd say, no, oh, sorry, right, right, we're in the process of evacuation, so let's say, no, we, we can't have anybody getting out of vehicles and stuff like that and try to end the Fine, right? no problem. So stop them. Fine, right? no problem. Um, but I don't know where any hangers is and I don't know where the clipboard is that's related to my Okay, so Mark, all I want you to do is just to help Sam out as well because he's got other jobs on, he's got an audit to do for me as well today. And amongst all this fun games, he's going to have a break as well. Um, so Mark, can you go over uh, with David, his role, and show him where the high vis is off, and go through exactly what it is he's doing in the event of an activation. Very important, yeah? Definitely. Now tomorrow I'm not in. Are, are you all in tomorrow? Yes. Yeah? Every, everybody no, in tomorrow? Well, tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. 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 Okay, so Sam, do me a favour Sam, I'll give you this, I'll, I'll put, put you a, a briefing sheet together. Mm. Can you go over the exact same briefing, excluding the customer service training, with everybody tomorrow? And if anybody's unsure, go out and physically show. Mm -hmm. And then you can pull down your hand over the mic. Mm -hmm. Everybody okay with that? Yeah, well, Any questions? No. All Sam right. will let you know today what time he is free to walk around with you all and show you. Um, and and, and free, available. Who's in the call room, Mercy, you are. Oh, yeah, <coughs> so more, can you show Mercy what she's doing? Yeah, that's that, that'll take a bit of pressure off Sam. So, uh, roll four, yeah? Yeah. yeah? yeah, so you show uh, Mercy. And uh, do you know Abby's oh, role? Yes, I was right. Roll four. Hi. You are an external, yeah? So, so you know what her role is? Basically, we are not about the security roles, role one to role three. So, so get the roll cards. Yeah, I, I can get the roll cards. Get the yeah, roll yeah, cards yeah. and do me a favor, because sure. you're on the mall anyway. Yeah, yeah. Can you go through both roles with Mercy and Abby? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Sam, you go through the role with Henry, and then I've got an audit for both of you to do. Yeah, that's right. Yeah? So, guys, thank you very much. Yeah? No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Have you got the keys on you? Thank you. Uh, Abby. Yeah. All right.